Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at solving a minimization problem using dynamic programming. We've got this network here and um, what we're looking to achieve is to get from A over here to H and we want to go along the minimum weighted edges in total as we go through. So, the way that dynamic programming works is that we, we always start from the end. So we start from H and what we're doing is we're looking at each vertex in turn and we're trying to find the best possible scenario to get to H. So for example, from vertex F, my best possible scenario, well in this case, because it's a minimization problem, it's going to be the shortest distance from F to H. Um, and we can see that that's 3. Because this is a directed network, um, we can only go in this direction here, so I don't need to look at any of the other branches. Um, similarly, from G to H, we've got the lowest um, weight, which is 6. So that's my best possible scenario in this minimization problem. Okay, um, if I now go a little bit further afield and I look at E, um, now E has different routes that it can take to get to H. It can either go directly there using one transition, or we've got these two routes that have both got two transitions. So what we might do here is have a look at the shortest, um, so our best possible scenario, which would be our, our um, lowest, weight, lowest weight, I should say. Um, so that's got a weight of 4, that's got a weight of 5, and that's got a weight of 9. So our best possible scenario from E would be 4. We then work backwards in the same way. Um, however, we're not just doing this by thinking about it. We obviously need to present um, it in a particular way so that we can demonstrate the use of our algorithm. So I'm just going to explain to you how this table works. So first of all, we have what we call our stage variable. Um, and our stage variable tells us um, how many transitions we are away from um, our end point, which is H. So for example, from F, I'm one transition away. And we're looking at the maximum number of transitions. So F is 1, and G would also be stage 1. Now E, because the maximum number of transitions to get to H, I can get there in one transition, but the maximum transition would be 2. This would be a stage 2. Um, and then we can work backwards in that way. So C would be the maximum number of transitions is going to be one, two, three. B, the maximum number of transitions is going to be one, two, three, four. D is also going to be one, two, three, four. And finally, A is going to be one, two, three, four, five. And that's a maximum number of transitions to get from A to H. So that's how the stages work. So I'm just going to fill all that in. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And for stage 1, we've got F and G. For stage 2, we've got E. Stage 3, we had C. Stage 4 was B and D. And stage 5 was A. OK, now what we're going to do from each of these um, stages, we're going to have a look at the actions that we can take. So from F, I go directly to H, so my action is going to be H. And now F to H has a value of 3. So I'll put in my 3 there. And now what we're saying, where it says current minimum, we're writing in there, currently from F, we know that our minimum is going to be 3. So I know that definitely from F, the shortest um, way of getting to H is going to be a weight of 3. Now my other stage 1 was G, which is over here. And again, my action is going to be H. And G to H is 6, so that means that I'm definitely 6 away when I'm at G. 
problem, but G, the minimum to get to H, is going to be 6, and I'm 100% sure of that. The next one I'm going to have a look at is E. Now, E has three options. We've got F, we've got G, and we've got H. There are three options. I'm going to write those down. F, G, and H. Now, if I go E to F, that's going to have a weight of 1. Oops. And right over here, so 1. Um, plus, well, if I'm now at F, so I've gone from E to F, if I'm now at F, I know that my minimum weight from F is 3. So I've got 1 plus 3. Now I can see that from the graph as well. If I go from E to F, that's 1, and then my minimum from F um, is definitely 3, so that's 3. And 1 plus 3 is um, obviously going to be equal to 4, so my minimum, whoops, I'll come back to that, getting ahead of myself there, okay, so 1 plus 3 is equal to 4. Um, if I go now via G, so E to G is going to be 3, plus, and my minimum from G, we can see, is um, going to be 6, that we found over here. So I've got 3 plus 6, which equals 9. And again, we can see that from our graph. E to G, 3 plus 6 gives me 9 over here. And then finally, I can go directly from E to H. So I can fill that in as just 5. Okay, um, And that's just the one transition, that one. That's just 5. So if I'm... If I can get myself to E, I know that my minimum from E, my best case scenario, is going to be this 4 here. So I'm going to put an arrow next to that, and 4 is now my current minimum from E. I know if I can get to E, then I'm only going to be 4 away from my goal, which is H. Okay, so we're now going to go to our stage 3 um, node, which is C. And from C, I've got um, two options. I can go C to F, or I can go C to E. So I'll keep it in alphabetical order, so I'll do E first. So C, E, and C, F. Now, if I go from C to E, that's got a weight of 2. And now I'm at E, and my minimum from E, I know is definitely 4, so I can add that on. I've got 2 plus 4, which equals 6. Again, we can just have a look. 2 plus 4, which came from this route, gives us 6. Okay, I've also got E to F as a possible route. Um, so, sorry, C to F as a possible route. So C to F was 4 plus, and I know my minimum from um, F is definitely 3, so I can add that on. So that's going to give me 4 plus 3, which is equal to 7. Just check that one. So C to F is 4 plus that 3, which gives us 7. Okay, so my current minimum here, um, well, if I'm at C, my best case scenario here is to go to E, which will give me a total weight of 6 on my way to H. Okay, so that's uh, C was my only stage 3. My stage 4 is now I've got B and D. So first of all, starting at B, um, there's two actions that I can take. I can either go to C or I can go to F. So we've got C over here and F over here. So if I have a look at B to C, first of all, that gives me a weight of 3. Plus, and from C, so I've gone from B to C, now from C my minimum is 6, so I can add that on, which means that that's going to give me a total weight of 9. Um, okay, so that was B to C, and... Um, 
and that root gives us a weight of 9. Okay, I'm just showing you this because I want you to see the roots as we go along so you, this, you can make some sense of what's going on. Okay, my other option is to go from B to F, which has a um, weight of 5. Um, and then if, I, if I'm now at F, I know that my minimum there is 3, so I can add that on. And that gives me 8. And so f if I can get myself to B, I know that my current minimum there would be 8. I can definitely get to H. Um, using a weight of 8 from B. Okay, so moving on to D now. With D we've got three transitions. We've got, um, sorry, three actions we can take. We've got C, E and G. C, E and G. So D to C is 3. Plus, and we know my minimum from C is um, 6. So I've got 3 plus 6, which equals 9. And then S D to E is going to be um, 2. Plus my minimum from E, which is 4. And that gives me 6. And then I've got my um, D to G, which is 5, and then my minimum from G is 6. That gives me 5 plus 6, which gives me 11. So if, if I can get myself to D, my minimum from D is going to be 6. That's my best case scenario once I've got to D. Okay, so finally... We're now at our stage 5, and we've got A over here, three actions, we can go B, C, or D. Um, B is 4, C is 2, D is 1. So we've got B, C, D, um, B is 4, C is 2, D is 1. Um, so from B, my... Um, my minimum is 8, so I can add that on there. I'm just doing it in a different order. So that gives me 12 from C. My minimum is 6, so I can add that on. That gives me 8. And from D, my minimum is 6, so I can add that on to that 1, which gives me 7. So from A, my minimum weight to H has got to be that 7 there. Okay, so what we now need to do is we need to work back and find out exactly what route we took. Well, I know from here that I need to go from A to D to get my 7, to get my minimum. So I can write A, D, and then from D I had to go down E, to get my minimum and then from E I need to go down F to get my 4 which is my minimum so I'm now going to go F and then from F I need to go to H to get my minimum and that takes me to the end so A D E F H and my mm -hmm. minimum weight mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is going to be equal to 7. And I'm just going to check this now. Um, so we've got A to D, D, D to E, E to F, and F to H. So that gives me 1, add 2, which is 3, add 1, which is 4, add 3, which is 7. Okay, and that works. Okay, so that's how we solve a minimization problem. Um, to solve a maximization problem, um, I would do exactly the same thing, um, but rather than um, when we get to each um, each bit here, rather than highlighting that 4 here, um, I would have highlighted the 9 here. 
and that will obviously then change all of my values later on. So you might want to have a go uh, starting with the same situation um, but having a go at maximising it instead. Thanks very much for joining me. I'll see you next time.